Hi guys, it's Michelle and today's video is going to be a video that one of you guys actually suggested to me literally yesterday, actually today while I'm filming this. One of you guys suggested that I make a video talking about the most haunted movie sets and I thought that would be actually really interesting. So I asked you guys on Twitter which one you would rather see me talking about the movie sets or me talking about like the Halloween killer which I feel like everyone has kind of talked about. Um, and you guys picked the movie sets. I will kind of be talking about the Halloween killer and I'm doing like a most scary things that happen on Halloween tomorrow. So that story is in it, but there's also a bunch of other stories. It's funny because I've absolutely seen zero of these movies because I do not mess with horror films. I don't do it. I don't vibe with it. I don't like it. It's just funny because I feel like a lot of you guys assume that I love like movies like this, but no, I, I like will not sleep for weeks. I am posting every day till Halloween. So if you guys missed any of the previous videos, definitely go check them out. But let's get into this one. So the first movie that we're going to be talking about is The Exorcist. Zero percent of me I was ever interested in this movie. This is one of my mom's favorite movies actually. And the original film was actually having some very creepy shit happen with it. So the cast of the crew overall just felt eerie while filming this. I feel like that's pretty normal when you're filming a horror film. But something that was just so out of the blue happened was that one of the sets actually caught on fire. So the set was of the McNeil household and they completely caught on fire everything was destroyed except for Reagan's room so I was like mom who the hell is Reagan and she was like oh that's like the person who is possessed in the movie um so that's odd and very like like what are the odds of that like that's bad energy I'd be so scared if I was the actors or you know the crew on set like that's freaking scary why the hell did the entire set catch on fire except for the room of the like haunted girl like I don't know like that's freaking creepy and I definitely don't like it not only that but there was actually several really sad deaths that were linked to the exorcist movie and two of the actors actually passed away after working on the film Jack McGowan and Vasilki Meliaros sadly passed away post-production and both of their characters actually passed away in the movie as well which is pretty scary. So a lot of fans of the movie think that that's because like there was like some type of haunting going on within the movie itself and it's really honestly pretty scary to think about and it's really sad um, that so many of the actors passed away and it's just I don't know something about that really freaks me out. You know I'm literally getting scared talking about it because it's like almost midnight but I don't know for some reason the set like completely catching on fire except for the like room of the person who is like the one that's possessed in the movie is a little freaky. The next movie that we're gonna be talking about is the Amityville Horror Movie. So this film is a movie that's based on a true story that actually happened, which is a common theme with a lot of these horror films, which is possibly why their sets are so haunted. In November of 1974, Ronald DeFeo Jr. actually murdered six of his family members in their own house. The house was at 112 Ocean Avenue in Long Island, New York. In December of 1974, George and Kathy Lutz and their three children moved into the Amityville house and they moved out within 28 days because they were so scared of this paranormal phenomenon that was happening to them like they were experiencing just so much haunted stuff that they literally had to move out which is so crazy and probably one of my biggest fears like with like moving like the idea of moving into a house that's like haunted, it really freaks me out because like, what if you buy it or like sign a lease and like you're stuck there? I don't know, it's, it's honestly an irrational fear, but it is a fear of mine. The star of the 1979 film, James Brolin, actually experienced super paranormal things while he was reading the script of the Amityville Horror. He wasn't sure if he wanted to do the movie or not and he was reading like a very, very scary part of the Oh, I just got chills. <laughs> very, very scary part of the script. And then all of a sudden his pants like on his hanger in his hotel room just fell to the ground. And then he was sold and decided to do the movie. But, you know, they actually ended up making a remake in 2005. And it starred Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds claimed that he consistently woke up every single night at 3 15 a.m which is apparently the witching hour i thought it was 12 but i don't know why he woke up every single night consistently while they were shooting the movie at 3 15 a.m the entire cast and crew felt like the house that they were filming at was super haunted and there was even a dead body found near the house that they were filming at which is just 
so freaking scary and just knowing the history of what happened at Amityville it's honestly not surprising that this movie would be haunted. All right next we're going to talk about The Conjuring which when I was like 15 or 16 was the reason I didn't sleep for two weeks. But what's interesting about The Conjuring once again the you know set vibes were obviously creepy because they're filming a creepy movie that's just kind of standard here. However Joy King was one of the stars of The Conjuring and she literally didn't do any of her own stunts which was weird because because she would come home from set and just have bruises all over her and they were unexplainable. She didn't know where the hell they came from. And another castmate experienced a similar thing. Vera Farminga actually noticed claw marks on her computer screen and then later she noticed that those claw marks came up in bruises on her leg. Which would be so scary. Like imagine seeing like a, just a mark on your computer and then all of a sudden like you look down and like the exact same mark is like on you. I don't like that. The prop room, they also had a lot of props go like missing and moved a lot, especially this wooden pig um, just continuously would be moved into different places without anybody moving it. Obviously, of course, that could be a prank, but the bruises thing is pretty weird because like, why do they just randomly have bruises? I'm not surprised that, that movie set is haunted because like I said, it scared me. <laughs> I'm sure so many people are gonna be like, that movie's not even scary. I'm like, like, bitch, I get scared watching Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> like, I can't do that. Like, that's just not, I don't like scary things. So the next movie set is so creepy and scary, but like also kind of sad. And it is the set of the movie Ghost. So I know Ghost itself isn't actually a horror film, but either way, the crewmates and the cast members of Ghost actually reported hearing like a child laughing and somebody like running up and down on the catwalk, which is the part of the like theater or, you know, soundstage area that's like above, which is so creepy. Um, and not only that, but sadly, Heather O'Rourke was an actor that passed away. She was, you know, pretty famous in Poltergeist and stuff, and she was only 12 years old when she died. And the soundstage, which was stage 19, where they filmed Ghosts, was actually where they filmed the TV show that Heather had been on, Happy Days. And according to different sources, Heather really enjoyed running around the catwalks while she was filming on for Happy Days. Just kind of sad and also really creepy at the same time time uh, but nonetheless of course I would be very freaked out um, regardless and so a lot of the castmates and the you know crew and stuff uh, from Ghost think that it was actually Heather's spirit that was kind of you know haunting the soundstage I guess probably not in like a malicious way but still nonetheless um I don't like that. So the next movie is another non-horror movie. It is actually a biopic called Introducing Dorothy Dandridge. Now this 1999 film starred Halle Berry where she was portraying Dorothy. So Halle Berry actually wore an actual gown that was owned by Dorothy. It's obviously to get in character. She was friends with some of Dorothy's friends. After they finished filming the movie, she ended up taking Dorothy's dress home with her and she left it in her living room just in the plastic bag that it came in. One night, Halle Berry claims that she heard what sounded like water boiling and so she was really confused and went downstairs and there was a baby doll's dress just floating in front of Dorothy's dress and obviously she was literally so scared she like started crying and sobbing and she called Dorothy's friend Jerry Branton he said quote honey I talk to Dottie all the time and if she was at your house she means you no harm so that's kind of sweet but Halle Berry was obviously pretty freaked out as I think anybody would be and she decided it was time to get rid of that dress and you know give it back so that was um would be horrifying I've always thought that doing a biopic would be such an interesting thing to do like I think I love biopics they're like probably one of my favorite movie genres and I know a lot of people I think a lot of people didn't like the Judy Garland one I'm not sure with Renee Zellweger but I thought it was really good um and just really interesting because it would be so weird to like you guys I've said it like three times during this Halloween week so far but I do like love history so I just think it would be really interesting to study a person and try to like become them um however I think that that can end up being really really creepy especially if you end up playing someone really scary this is an old conspiracy I talked about like years ago but like Ross Lynch said that like he felt like Jeffrey Dahmer was kind of like he felt like Dahmer for a second and that's like obviously not good uh same with Heath Ledger and the Joker but yeah sorry for the sidetrack but biopics have always really 
interested me a lot because I think that they're so like interesting to study someone who's like not living anymore and portray them. It's pretty cool that Halle Berry got to actually wear Dorothy's clothes but yeah I gotta say that would definitely creep me out as well. So if I was like 100 pounds lighter I feel like I could definitely be Amy Winehouse in a biopic. But seriously with the Halle Berry one like what the hell would you do? Because the other ones you know maybe were explainable like they're just weird and pretty scary and probably paranormal but you never really know for sure. Well, like, if you saw something floating midair, like, I literally do not know what I would do. Like, I think I would actually cry. Like, I know she cried, but, like, same. I don't like things that I can't explain being like, oh, no, it was just the wind or something. But that is not something that I feel like Halle Berry could be able to be like, oh, no, it's fine. But, um... The last movie that we're going to be talking about is a 2005 movie, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. I honestly think that this is probably one of the scariest ones because it's another one that's just unexplainable. Like, I literally would be like, what the hell? The star of the movie, Jennifer Carpenter, reported that in her hotel room, the radio would randomly turn on and it would be playing the same Pearl Jam song alive. So this was during the entirety of them filming this movie and they were all staying at the same hotel, like the cast and crew. And it wasn't only happening to Jennifer, like it was happening to multiple cast and crewmates, which is so scary because why would the same song come on? I hate that. Um, a lot of them also reported their TVs coming on and everything and I would literally lose my mind. But it got so bad to the point where they had to actually ask for their radios to be removed from their hotel rooms because they were that scared. And I actually hate that. Like that would be so freaking scary. Could you imagine? For sure they all believe that there was something haunted going on and I mean I believe it too. Why would it play the same song? Like even the castmates said that it played this song alive by Pearl Jam and I would just be literally... I would, I would probably quit the movie. <laughs> I don't think I would do it. Like I would be so scared. So yeah, that is it. Those were the most interesting haunted movie sets that I could find. I know there were quite a few others, but um, some of them honestly scared me too much to talk about. So that's why I didn't. I'm sure there's probably one that you guys were like, waiting for me to talk about but uh no <laughs> that is it for today's video if you guys liked it please give it a big thumbs up let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about these different movie sets are there any movie sets that you've heard of that aren't horror movies that like are super haunted because obviously like some places in hollywood some sets and stuff are just really old so i would love to know because i mean a couple of these weren't horror films but I don't know, I think it's more interesting when it's not a scary movie that they're filming. So, cause I feel like everyone's kind of on edge when they're filming a scary movie. But let me know if you guys have any down below. But that is it, make sure you follow me on Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram because I'm always posting really dope best shit on there. Subscribe for new videos every week and I will see you guys later. Bye.